following content is of an adult nature, and it may make some listeners blush, say, oh my God, or even cause offense. Feel free to turn the radio down in three, two, one. Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Dr. Nikki Goldstein. That's very impressive. Not bad, is it? <laughs> Thought about rolling my eyes. Thought about a big welcome, and then I just fade off into the sunset and let you do your thing, Dr. Nick Nick. You know what they say if you can roll your eyes well? What? Mm. Means you're good with your tongue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so checks you out. Pride checks out. On there. I do. But he was just showing off. Yeah. All the ladies out there, <laughs> Danny can roll his tongue. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Nikki Goldstein is in the house. She's a sexologist slash relationship expert. If you have a question for her, 13 10 60, uh, you can give us a bell. Uh, prizes up for grabs for all callers that get on the air tonight. Now, Dr. Nikki Goldstein, I've purposely held fire on one of your uh, media channels. I believe it was Instagram, oh, and I've good. taken a screenshot here. Oh, good. You do a hashtag Ask Dr. Nikki on your Instagram. I do. And uh, the question is, why does sex have to finish when someone has an orgasm? And I thought, well, because someone's had an orgasm. <laughs> Yes, but the problem is that that somebody is normally a guy, mm. and for a lot of women out there, they're sitting there going, well, I'm nearly there, and let's keep going. I think there's this urban myth that sex have to finish in an orgasm. Why? Because when you look at the procreation model of sex, you know, the whole motivation to have sex was to have a baby. If we're not having sex to have a baby then just because one person has an orgasm, it doesn't mean that it has to stop. There's something called afterplay, just as important as foreplay. So if the guy's the one that's had the orgasm, I know that guy's like, I just want to sleep, I want to lay over and just, you know, enjoy it all. I am spent physically, spiritually and emotionally after an orgasm. Get your hand, help the person out next to you, maybe have a little nap, then wake up again and have another crack at it. It doesn't have to end at an orgasm. But that also goes with it can end without an orgasm. Everyone thinks that it's like the one thing to have sex and to have good sex as an orgasm must be present. Mm. Not necessarily. You can still enjoy it mm. without the big O. 100%. I usually fire one off about three or four hours before I know I'm going to get lucky. Just because I prefer to go longer and risk not having one uh, than go off like a party popper at a three-year-old's birthday. You just want to put on a good show. Yeah, I do. No, no, seriously. like uh, Guys, there's too many raps out there that guys just want to get their rocks off and a wham-bam, thank you, ma'am kind some of thing. Some guys do. No, some guys do. Yeah. Some guys do. Not but everyone a lot is of, deep and emotional uh, as No, you are. but a lot of guys, the whole performance anxiety comes from that we, we are just so desperate to please the other mm. one. And it's, if you said, right, you can either only orgasm yourself, Lakey, for the rest of your life, or no orgasm for you ever again, but guarantee an orgasm for your partner for the rest of your life. You'd pick that. I'd take the latter. It's very mature of you. It's very yeah, kind. Well, I'm I, a mature I, should guy. we put this to the test? Because I actually don't believe it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Why would I lie about that? Yes, but it's one thing to say it and then another thing to live it. Mm. So right. just you, careful what you wish for. I'm going to have to take my slippery erection word for that, Dr. Nick. <laughs> oh. Liz okay. in Coffs Harbour. You've got 131060. What's. <coughs> Live cough, sorry. I was sick last night. Uh, what's your question to Dr. Nikki? Um, yeah, look, my husband had an, an accident over 15 years ago and he's got nerve damage in the back of his spine at his neck. And um, every time he um, climaxes, um, he has some shocking pains just shooting up through his body. Do you, have you heard anything like that before? Well, I have heard of injuries and, and what happens when you have an orgasm because your body will, the muscles will tense and often they can have a flow-on effect to other areas, and especially where there is injuries, even if it's as simple as, you know, a joint pain or anything like that. So if there is severe trauma to that area, then you are going to be contracting those orgasms and potentially having pain there. This is where I actually think we need to be more better at having these conversations with people like physios and osteos. I did a a hip injury, and one of the first things I had to ask my osteo was, okay, where can I not put my leg? You know, what positions? And they were saying to me how a lot of injuries, you know, people are too scared to talk about sex because really for this, it's going to be about how do you relax and have an orgasm and how do you brace for that, you know, intense contraction but not have that flow-on effect to the neck and back area. So there are ways to be able to relax and meditation and looking at kind of ways of deep breathing through an orgasm so it's not as muscular, contractual. I don't even think that's a word. But I would say to also have a conversation too to any kind of other practitioners you're going to about different positions or different ways to minimise the impact on the spine. Mm. I reckon we'll put... 
Put him in a couple of different positions as well. Put him on a lira hoop, maybe. <laughs> Try some different angles. You never know. It's not about the position. It's about the muscular contraction. Yeah, I oh know. But if the contra- upside down, you can't contract. Yes, you still it. can. Yeah, well, you never know. Let's get him in. <laughs> Let's get him in and hang him up. <laughs> we'll Do you mind if we hang your husband positions. upside down and yeah. just test this theory? I reckon that could work. <laughs> you, can, you can try. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him in, Lizzie. Uh, if you've got a question to Dr. Nikki Gold's thing, give us a call. 131060. Get some more on the end. The Danny Lakey Late Show. The Danny Lakey Late Show. Around the country, happy hump day. The following content is of an adult nature and it may make some listeners blush, say, oh my God, or even cause offence. Feel free to turn the radio down in three, two, one. Dr. Nikki Goldstein. And that's supposed She's to in impress. The studio. This is proving Anyone? that the R's were the oral sex, but what's that supposed to prove you got? All at? the other things, all okay. the other settings I've got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can ask a question to Dr. Nikki Goldstein on 131060. She's a sexologist and relationship expert. Justin in Chaganini, you're on the air. What's the cue? Uh, hey, he's going. Yeah, bloody good chip. What's the cue? Um, uh, every time I have intercourse with my uh, partner, when I climax, I get really hungry. Mm. So, like, I'll go into the kitchen and smash, like, six sandwiches. Mm. Like, I'm pit, pit, yeah. yeah. I get a bit pissy about it because I don't lay there and cuddle it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are you eating enough vagina during? Oh, Danny. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, maybe you need to think ahead and make the sandwiches and put them beside the bed right. so that when you're done, you can cuddle with, like, one arm yeah. and eat sandwiches with the other. Life is about compromise, mm. Justin. Yeah. But it's a very easy thing, right? Sex is exercise. It requires energy. And when you have an orgasm, it also requires energy. So it's very yeah. un- it's very reasonable that you are hungry. You just need to find that happy ground between when you have your sandwiches and making sure that your missus has some snuggle time. Mm. This is a, this is a yeah. classic example of Pack thinking ahead, Jamie. Snacks in the bedroom. Yeah, snacks in the bedroom, Massive peanut butter fan sandwich, of that. rest it on the right shoulder. That way you can eat no. from the shoulder. No, you can. You can eat from the shoulder and then both hands still. A cup of bosom, oh, you mean, right hand around the I hip for spooning. I thought you meant spooning. like a doggy style thing. I was like, no. Mm. Dr. Nikki, please, I, I ask you every week. Please I get your mind I went to another level. I, went, I did a you just then. <laughs> Sarah in Newcastle. Thanks, Jay man Sarah in Newcastle, what's your question? Hi, my question is, what are the chances of getting pregnant from pre cum Okay, so there are a lot of factors when it comes to pregnancy, especially pre cum I think the myth is that you can't get pregnant from pre cum You can, but it also then depends on where a woman is in her cycle and what type of contraceptive options she's using. So the, the biggest message with this one is, you know, even though they think the pull-out method works, there is never a guarantee, right? We can get pregnant from pre cum So if you do not want an accidental pregnancy at the moment, make sure that you have looked very closely into barrier protection and some form of a contraceptive option. Yeah, always steer clear of the enthusiastic web, Sarah. Always. (laughs) Okay, thank you. Shannon in Mildura on 131060. What's your question? Um, Hey, Uh, girl. So my question is... um, I I don't I get real nervous when it comes to oral sex. Um, I don't I do like it, but I just can't bring myself to allow it, my partner to do it. Oh, um, you're the I worst! Can, <laughs> I, I hate know. That. You know this, this actually is a common thing. I think we've had a few people call in and ask this question, and I know it's yeah, very then, hard then with then Danny. Um, when it comes to him, he loves it himself, but I even I'm so nervous to do it to him as well, and I feel like I'm letting him down. Well, no, I think you need to work out what particular it is that you don't like. Some people can find it very confronting. So if you're receiving oral sex, some people go, oh, it feels a bit slimy and I don't really like it. If when it comes to receiving it, I would actually suggest for him to start around the thigh region first. You know, it might be some little kisses, some little touches, just getting you used to it because a lot of people find it very confronting when it's straight into oral sex. It's kind of this shock of, hang on, this doesn't feel right. So it's about warming yourself up to those sensations. In terms of giving it to him, you need to work out, well, is it a smell thing? Is it a taste thing? Was there a bad experience? Is it a size thing? Is it too big for your mouth? You really need to identify the barrier as to why you don't like to give it to him. And keep in mind that if it's something that he really enjoys, it can be such a beautiful turn on, especially with a partner, when you're able to do something that gets them off. Can I ask, why do you feel so self-conscious about it, Shannon? Because I run into girls like that all the time. Is it the smell? Is it the aesthetic of the labia majoras and minoras? Or does it just not feel right in the gut? 
No, it's like everything you see on Facebook. You know all those those memes and jokes that all about what vaginas are like, like how they they're they're gross or they're scary or they smell. And and personally, like I feel as though like I'm fine, but it's just it's in the back of your mind, the self conscious thing of is there something wrong? Like, oh. uh, well, you need you also I... need to ask your talk to you about your partner with this and yeah. say, you know, and I'm feeling a little bit insecure, you know. I think I'm okay, but I just get stuck in my head that it might taste or smell. And have that conversation with him and get the reassurance from him. Yeah. Your, have, your man would have any Yeah, he your, said that thing, but... He's, guys aren't going down there if they don't like it, trust me. If, if, your, it man, if your man's nice. doing it, he, he loves it down there. May I suggest a dental dam to start off with? Oh, then no, tra- no, no, just baby steps. Then, feels tra- then transition to glad wrap. No. And then the full thing. Get thinner and thinner as it goes. Try a nice shower together. Make sure you feel clean yourself. Boring. Well, dental dam and gland wrap is better, Danny. <laughs> yeah! In the kitchen! <laughs> Just a, a skirt made out of gland wrap. Thanks, Shannon. The Danny Lakey Light Show.